Welcome along to the Property Academy podcast by Open Spartans. I'm your host, Stephen Knight. I'm Andrew Nichol. And today on the show, we're talking about the best places to invest in New Zealand. If you are thinking about buying a rental property, where do you start to look? That's what we're going to cover in today's show, all based on data and analysis. But Andrew, this comes from a question from a listener of the show. Yeah, so Gemma said, hi Ed. I'm long-term listener of the podcast, First Time Caller, and she said in Papa Tony's recent view, he's suggesting that maybe Christchurch is now at its, at, at its expected long-term term average. Jeez, that was a mouthful. Um, where do you think the next places for potential growth are going to be moving forward? That's what we're going to cover today. And I think you've got to start by asking, what are some things that we're looking for if we are looking for properties. And what I'm going to do for all of you guys on YouTube, you're going to be able to see this. For you guys on the podcast, I'm going to describe it for you. If you're listening, you need to go to YouTube later and watch this because Ed spent the last 15 minutes berating me to um, focus and look at his uh, genius that he's been working on over the weekend. It is actually a, a, a piece of art. So we've been working on this for probably about the last six months in terms of getting this right. And what I look at is every single town in New Zealand with more more than 10,000 people ballpark. So we look at, we consider every uh, town, including places like Mosgill and Harbour, where I grew up, and places like Oamaru and Cambridge and everywhere. So we can canvas the whole of the country and understand from a data perspective where's looking good and where's not so looking good. And as well as the usual factors that you'd expect, like where is each town sitting within its property cycle and the expected population growth and how large the population is. And as well as that, I also want to understand how affordable is that property market? I mean, is it going to cost me uh, $1.35 million on average to buy a house in that area, like for instance, Auckland, or is it going to be quite cheap? Now, why could that be important? Because as bank lending criteria gets tighter, you might want to start purchasing a relatively cheaper house. I also look at how affordable houses are compared to incomes. I'm looking at how high the incomes are. I'm looking at how high the rents are compared to the house price as well. So looking at gross yields. Now, I'm trying to look at all of these factors to build a picture of how that property market's going. And one thing that's quite difficult when you start analysing all of these areas and looking at all of these data points is saying, well, how do I weigh it all up? Uh, how, if, if some place is going to increase in population by 15% over the next 30 years, is that good or is it not? And if something's 1% overvalued, is that good or is it not? And what I do, and I'd recommend anybody who uses spreadsheets do this, is I start to create heat maps for every single data point. So uh, red in this case is good, blue in this case is bad. So Christchurch is the most undervalued area in the country by my numbers. I am going to talk about the differences between how I calculate it and how Papa T does uh, very shortly, but that's about 13% undervalued, so that's really good. The most overvalued area is Tokoroa, which is in the South Waikato district. So that's where we can start to build that picture, but we can also say, well, if blue is bad in this instance, uh, the population or expected population increase in Tokoroa over the next 30 years is 15%, almost 16%, but actually that's not very high compared to the rest of the country where on average we're expecting a 25% increase. The population is relatively low there, only 26,000 people. So if I'm thinking about is that a robust property market or not, the answer is probably not. The yields are looking pretty good and the house price is pretty low, but also incomes are quite low there as well. So this is how we start to build the picture. And you can see for any given area, is there a lot of red, meaning it's quite good? Or is there a lot of blue, meaning maybe we wouldn't touch it with a barge pole? And so Ed, are you going to apply a different weighting to each of these? Or are you going to consider them all of equal importance? So you could go about saying, I think that property cycle is 50% important and population growth is 25% and you know affordability is 10%. I think all of that is bollocks, really. Right. There's no way to come up with a, a, a decent weighting that says this is better than anything. And you're always going to have some good factors and some bad factors, right? The way that I look at this is first I look at what's most undervalued first and what's most overvalued and then I start to look at the wider picture so I'll zoom out on this a little bit just so you can start to see literally the wider picture 
the bigger picture of it. And this is where I'd start to say, where's somewhere that's quite good? Okay, I'm looking at Auckland, for instance, about 10% undervalued at the moment. Its population growth is about average, about 28%. Bear in mind that 28% in Auckland is an enormous number of people, and that's because the population is enormous, about 1.7 million people. Now, the difficulty with Auckland is that it's really expensive, and house prices are high compared to incomes, and the yields are low. So if you just looked at that picture, you might think that Auckland and I think I'm looking specifically at Pukekohe there as well. You might say, well, I'm not sure if that's very good or not. Well, the problem is one offsets the other, and so then someone might get a, a, a zero result based on that model if you apply equal um, balance to it, whereas, you know, that, that probably has got good opportunities right now. Let's talk about Christchurch. Well, no, I'm still on Auckland, thank okay, you, Andrew. all right. Because then what well, I'd do in that case is say, okay, the average property price in Auckland, according to CoreLogic, is about $1.35 million. But we know for a fact that you can buy a decent investment property there for seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollars. So that's where I'd say, well, I like it's undervalued. I like how large the population is. Twenty eight percent population growth for a city of that size is enormous. Okay, I don't like how affordable properties are. They're really expensive. But actually, I know I can get something substantially lower than average. So that's how you'd start to build the picture. Mm -hmm. So you look at the data, you weigh it all up, and then you've got to make a judgment call for, uh, in my opinion. The other thing that's cool for this spreadsheet that I just want to show you, and I'll explain for everybody on the podcast as well, and I think I might release this, not straight away, but I might give it a bit of a touch up and release this just to Opus Partners clients. Um, but what you can do is you can change the city you're looking at and see over the last 30 years, how over or undervalued has it been? Because this can give us a sense of the momentum of the market. Is Auckland becoming more overvalued or is it starting to catch up? Uh, which would suggest that, okay, the opportunity might be disappearing soon. Whereas, But in this case, I can see that Auckland is actually becoming more and more undervalued. Now, that would suggest to me that within the next couple of years, we might start to see a turn and the Auckland region might get faster uh, house price growth compared to the rest of the country. So this says to me there are some opportunities in Auckland. Am I right in saying that it's the most undervalued it's been in 30 years based on this? Uh, it's, well, it's getting close. it's getting close to it. Yeah. It's certainly getting close to it. And so tell us about Christchurch then. Okay, so by my numbers, I still say Canterbury's about 13%. Um, places like Rangiora, Kaiapoi, Ashburton, they're all looking pretty undervalued to me. I mean, I'm still excited about Ashburton. I, I, so just so everybody knows at home, by the way, I look at the data, try and figure out which, which areas we should look into. It's Andrew and, and his team's job to go and get properties. And I'm still berating him, yeah. trying to get some well, out of Ashburton. The problem is we've got them, but they're, they're comparable to Christchurch in terms of price. So... I think that Christchurch is stronger if you're if you've got a budget that allows you for either. Yeah, what we really want is a developer to go out and build some really cheap nice stuff. cheap stuff Absolutely. in Ashburton. It would go off like a frog. If in you're a, a developer listening to this and you want to do some cheap uh, uh, or affordable properties, I should say properties in Ashburton, then give me a call. Yeah, that, that, those would do really really well. I can imagine. Um, you can see that Ashburton is still catching up. So while Ashburton was really undervalued, about twenty five percent under, it's now sitting at about 12% because that great Christchurch catch-up or Canterbury <laughs> catch-up that we started talking about probably about a year and a half, maybe two and a half years ago, I mean, that's been on for the last two and a half years and you can see it see it within the data. And now one thing I do want to address is why is Papa T, Tony Alexander, um, saying that Christchurch is about where it's going, uh, about at its long-term average, whereas we're still saying it's undervalued. And the reason behind that is when Tony runs his numbers, he puts a big trend line through this. And so he's saying, well, over time, Christchurch has been getting less valuable compared to the rest of New Zealand. And so if you follow that trend line, you would assume that that trend is going to continue. Now, the reason for our purposes, we don't do that, is if you assume that one area is going to become less valuable compared to the rest of New Zealand and other areas are going to be more valuable, two things happen. One, you lose that that assumption, which I've seen a lot of economists uh, point out and we, we've reported on on the show before, that 
areas do get different rates of capital growth. Whereas we assume everything in New Zealand has the same amount of capital growth except for Auckland, which increases at a slightly faster rate. And the reason we do that is because of recency bias. So if Christchurch is really undervalued as it was, then you would think, oh, well, I'm not going to invest in Christchurch because it's getting less value compared to everywhere else. Whereas we'd say, no, it's not that Christchurch is getting less valuable over time. It's just that it's really undervalued at the moment. That's what the opportunity is. And that's what's bringing down the trend line. If you ran these numbers, and let's look at somewhere like Wellington, City, for instance. If you ran the numbers on Wellington City five years ago, you would think, oh, Wellington is becoming less and less valuable <laughs> over time compared to the rest of the country. Then what happened? It had an enormous catch up, came back to its average, and now it's becoming more undervalued again. So the reason I don't use a trend line except for Auckland is I don't assume that any area is going to become relatively less uh, valuable over time compared to the rest of the country. It's that changes uh, within the market kind of obscure what their average is. And that's the reason why uh, we calculate it slightly differently. And you'll hear him say, oh, it's about where it should be. Whereas we'd say, hey, it's still about 13% undervalued. Give me one more. Give me Dunedin. Okay, so if we were looking at Dunedin, we can see... D. Yeah, I yeah, know. It'd be, ha- it'd be help. It would be helpful if I could spell. Um, so we can see Dunedin was about ten percent overvalued. Now it's about one percent above. But let's look at the wider picture for Dunedin and see what do we think of that. So if I look at Dunedin, I can see okay, it's one and a half percent overvalued. That's not too concerning. What's concerning for me though is that the population. Let me just freeze that pain for everybody on YouTube. Otherwise, it really will be a pain for them. <coughs> So, good joke. Did you like that? No. <laughs> oh. Dunedin, I can see that it's about five, only 5% population growth expected over the next 30 years. That's really low in the context mm. where the New Zealand average is about 25%. The population is, is you know, reasonably large, about 130,000 people. Property prices are somewhat affordable, but their incomes are also relatively low compared to the rest of the country. About $89,000 is the average household income. Um, if you compare that to Christchurch, for instance, the average household income is is about $10,000 higher, mm. uh, which is a bit more attractive for me. So Dunedin it's kind of an average area where I'm kind of like, maybe there'll be some opportunity in five years' time, but perhaps not right now. So give the uh, give the listeners a time frame on when you're going to release this, buddy. Oh, uh, g- give me two months and I'll, I'll get this out for everybody. Uh, specifically, uh, we're only going to release this for, for Opus Partners clients. Um, we've got to give them some benefit to working with us, <laughs> apart from... Apart, from, apart but, from all the work we do, but from, thank you, Ed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because this spreadsheet's going to make all the difference. Yeah. But look, in terms of uh, answering Gemma's question, which is... Which of the areas were hot on? Which areas wouldn't we touch? I'm still very hot on Canterbury. Um, the Christchurch catch-up is on, and maybe in five years' time that will be finished. What you've got to remember with these overvalued, undervalued th- um, analyses that we do is it takes years to correct. You know, if we're looking at Wellington, it took about 2016 to a, about 2021. So it took five years to go from its lowest point where it was completely undervalued to then just crossing that overvalued um, threshold. So it does take a long time. Christchurch is still there, but the opportunity isn't going to stick around forever. It's probably going to be in the next couple of years. Mm. Um, If you look at places like Rolleston, which we've been quite hot on, that's still about 10% undervalued, oh, about 7.5% undervalued, but that's certainly on the catch-up as well. Mm. Um, The places that I'm most interested in are Auckland, but then I'm going to make a bold prediction and say that for well Wellington City and Lower Hutt, they house prices there have fallen so much that I can see that in a year or two, that might be nearer the top of our of our recommend mm-hmm. list. Mm-hmm. It's not there yet, and I, I'm not saying that this is the main place we're going to start recommending to investors, but I can see that it's becoming significantly uh, undervalued. Lower Hutt is still overvalued, but maybe if you had the deal of the century, you might start looking there. Mm-hmm. But you can start to see that in a couple of years, that might be one of the main hot spots um, that we're, we're talking about on this podcast and seeing a lot of opportunities in. Really, because Wellington has region has seen house prices fall so sharply, that's what's starting to create the seeds or or the foundation for some opportunity there. In terms of what I wouldn't recommend at all though, Tokoroa, live in, 
Wanganui, those are the sorts of places that I'm thinking I wouldn't touch any of those with a barge pole at the moment. Way overvalued, low population growth, lower incomes, relatively affordable houses, but not very interested. Right, let's wrap it up there, but please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It really does help us get the message out to more people. And hey, if you're listening to the podcast and want to check out the video version, head over to our YouTube channel. We release new videos every Monday and Wednesday. And if you just Google Opus Partners YouTube, hey, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Thanks for listening to the Property Academy podcast. I'm your host, Steve McKnight. We're going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tips, and insights to help you get the most out of your single Until next time, bye.